We have a good day and a pleasant lesson to consider today, learners. Our objective in this video lesson is to go over the concept in depth by solving and assessing problems involving mean and variance of the probability distributions. It would be better if we have a piece of paper, a pen, and a scientific calculator beside our table so that we can be able to solve together each problem and have a full grasp of the discussion. Let's start by recalling the formulas we learned from the previous topics. To find the expected value or mean value of a discrete random variable, we should be using this formula. However, in finding the variance of a discrete random variable, we are using this formula. And lastly, we use this formula in order to get the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. This is just simply the square root value of our variance. After refreshing our minds by recalling important concepts to ponder, we can now begin solving the following problems. You may pause and play again this video to test your knowledge as we go in depth of this lesson. Problem number 1. The random variable x, representing the number of nuts in a chocolate bar, has the following probability distribution. Compute the variance. By looking at the table of the probability distribution, we can depict that there are 5 outcomes which are 1 to 5 and their given probability that is within 0 to 1 has a summation which is equal to 1 according to the properties of the discrete probability distribution. Since we are asked to find the variance, we are going to find first the mean of this probability distribution. By doing so, we are just going to use this formula. Multiply the value of the random variable to their corresponding probability and get their summation, which is 2.9. You can use your scientific calculator to get the correct answer quickly. Since we have the value of the mean, we can now get the variance of this problem by using this formula. We have to square the product of the value of the random variable and the corresponding probability, get the summation, then subtract it to the square of the mean. We will get an answer and that is 1.29. Do you still get the clear picture of the lesson? Well, I hope you do, because now, we will proceed to the next problem. Problem number 2. A small study aims to see the correlation between having a tattoo and a case of clinical depression. In one group of 12 people from the same age bracket, 7 have 1 tattoo, 3 have 2 tattoos, and the rest have 3 tattoos. If a person is randomly picked from this group and evaluated for depression, what is the expected number of the tattoos that the person will have? This is the table of our probability distribution. Since we are finding the expected value, that means we are going to use this formula. That is 1 times 7 over 12 plus 2 times 1 fourth plus 3 times 1 six. So the answer is equals to 19 over 12, which is equivalent to 1.58. We can now interpret the answer like this. Since the expected value of x is approximately 1.58, then a randomly chosen is expected to have about 1.58 tattoos, or in whole number, 2 tattoos. Now, let's proceed to another problem. Goodhands is a car insurance company who offers to pay 600,000 pesos if a car is destroyed beyond repair due to an accident. This insurance policy costs 25,000 pesos per year and the probability that the company will need to pay the amount of insurance is 0.003. Based on the problem, what is the probability that the company will not pay any amount to its client within a year? Since one of the properties of the discrete random variable is the sum corresponding random probability should be equal to 1. We are going to subtract the given which is 0.003 to 1 to get the probability that the company will not pay any amount. 
and that would be 0 0.997. Next, what is the expected value of the insurance to its buyer? First, let's complete the table of the distribution below. Since 600,000 pesos is the offer, we will subtract it to 25,000 pesos and we will have 575,000 pesos left and then we will put the negative 25,000 pesos since we paid for the insurance policy. We are going to use this formula. So this will become now 575,000 times 0 0.003 minus 25,000 times 0 0.997 and the answer would be negative 23,200. We can interpret this as each policy holder expects to lose 23,200 pesos every year. For example, number 4. The officers of the faculty club of a public high school are planning to sell 160 tickets to be raffled during the Christmas party. One ticket will win 3,000 pesos. The other ticket will win nothing. If you are a faculty member of the school and you will buy one ticket, what will be the expected value and the variance of your gain? Okay, first, one ticket will have a gain of 3,000 but the probability of winning will only be 1 over 160. On the other hand, the remaining tickets will have a gain of nothing and then the probability will be 159 over 160. So this is how the table distribution will look like. Now, let's get the expected value using this formula. So, 0 times 159 over 160 plus 3000 times 1 over 160, the answer is 18.75. Then, let's get the variance of your gain. Quantity 0 squared times 159 over 160 plus 3000 squared times 1 over 160, then subtract it to the 8.75 squared and we will get 55,898.44. This only means that the expected value is 18.75 pesos. This amount is the expected gain. The variance of your gain is 55,898.44 pesos and it indicates how spread out the values of x are around the mean. Now, we're done to the last problem to solve, learners. Just like the previous problems we solved, you may pause this video and solve it on your own, then play it again to see if we get the same correct answer. For the last example, Senior citizen of a particular barangay organized a Christmas raffle bonanza. 1,000 raffle tickets are sold for 50 pesos each. Each one has an equal chance of winning. The first prize is a 32-inch LED TV worth 10,000 pesos. The second prize is an electric oven worth 5,000 pesos. And the third prize is a grocery pack worth 2,500 pesos. Let X denote the net gain from the purchase of one ticket. Find the expected value of X, then interpret. The expected value is equal to the product of net gain and the probability of winning. In this case, you have three chances of winning. You may win the first, second, or third prize plus the product of net loss and the probability of losing. So, this is how our table of distribution would look like. For winning the first prize, we will only have 9,950 because we subtracted the cost of each ticket from 10,000 and our chance of winning is only 1 over 1,000. Same goes to winning the second prize. We will only get 4,950 and 2,450 for the third prize, with 1 over 1,000 chance of winning 2, while negative 50 is our net loss, and the probability of losing is 997 over 1,000. If we are going to get the summation of the corresponding probability, this would equal to 1, 
Therefore, it shows the property of the discrete probability distribution. In finding the expected value, we will use again this formula. Again, multiply the value of the random variable to their corresponding probability and get their summation which is equal to negative 32.50. Or we can interpret this as, if someone were to buy tickets repeatedly and although he has a chance to win, he would lose 32.50 pesos on average per ticket purchased. That concludes our lesson for today, learners. I hope you learned something. Thank you for listening.